Welcome. We're going to do a simple introduction to TDD using a real coding demonstration to show firstly that uh, TDD is more than a test first approach, that is it's, uh, of writing a failing test and making it pass. The importance of baby steps, aka the three laws of TDD, that is don't write production code unless it's to make a failing unit test pass, don't write any more of a unit test than is sufficient to fail, and don't write any more production code than is sufficient to pass one failing unit test. And that it's mostly about design, and we're going to let the test drive the actual production code itself. And as you should see, as a test gets more specific, the code gets more generic. Just want to also add that one of the it's one of the number of value added practices covered in Scrum Org PSD course to help development teams deliver potential release increments at the end of the sprint. So we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to use a cutter, and the cutter it's, it we use is Prime Factors, and that states that we need to write a static method, generate that given an integer n will return a list of integers containing the prime factors of n and arrange an increasing numeric order. That's saying that generate 1 should return an empty list and generate 30 should return the numbers 2, 3 and 5. And remember a prime number can be divided evenly only by 1 or itself and it has to be greater than 1. Okay so we've done some initial analysis of the tests we'd likely need. So let's get started. Uh, let's just run this to make sure that I've got a test framework up and running. Great. Let's delete that. And let's write our first test. So generate a scenario with number one. Return empty list. Um, we want to uh, have a list of int which is the result of a prime factor generator oops, that generates generates one we should then return a result which is equal to empty Run that. Okay, let's make that compile. Um, I need to put those up there. Okay, let's create a static class. Yes. Generate. Yes. Okay, let's run a test. Okay, so now we've got a failing test and we need to make it compile. I do prefer sometimes to make it explicitly fail than just having that. So let's just do this. Great. All right. So let's write some production code to make that pass. And we need to make do the most simplest thing to make it pass. And the most simplest thing is we create an empty list. Fantastic. So we have now got our first passing test. And once we have a passing test, we can refactor. So let's take some of the stuff we don't need, which is that. Um, we can get rid of this dead code. Um, we also would like to put that in its own uh, file uh, and we'll bring it over to the right here so that we can see both at the same time. I've done changes so I can refactor. Um, that's great. Right, so let's write our second test. So that will be generate uh, with number two and with return a list containing oops, containing two okay so now we've got result equals uh, prime factor generator and we're going to generate two which this time is going to assert that uh, the result um, is equivalent to um, uh, why can't I have that? I can. Fantastic. So I've got my next failing test, and which is saying that 
it's expecting uh, a list containing two but was empty so make that make let's make that passed so in here we've had a constant um, we had no we've gone to a constant and now we need to look at maybe a next step which is a variable so let's first of all change this into a variable which returns primes now we've added nothing new should be the same fantastic right so let's write some new code so here and here we are going to I've seen some refactoring I need to do I have got an I in there not very descriptive so if I equals to then we want to primes dot add to great let's run the test got a green state okay so let's change that to be a uh, number so the explicit again refactored some code right so we've fixed up the production code we've got some duplication here and I know that I'm going to need to keep doing this so let's see if we can write this in a parameterized way to make it easier for going forward as well as remove the drive validation that we have now so let's make it parameterized um, test case I can do this um, just make it a bit quicker for me what should do right I will then take that and put it as a parameter yes yes and I will parameterize that as a expected list right I will change this to return expected list and with number two right so let's run the test to make sure that we're in the same state great we're in the same state uh, this time now I can replace this with something similar so this time I've got one and I want it to be an empty list great so I can move that duplication there and I can now easy write my next test which is three Okay, so we've got um, a more generalized test. So we need to um, generalize the code. So in here we've got a constant of two uh, and we need to make it more um, generalized. So we put number is greater than one this time and I want to use the Scala IE parameter instead of constant. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, no refactoring to do. It looks all clean for me. Let's go straight into four. So four is uh, two and two. Let's run the test. Great, I've got another failing test, so now I can write some production code. So in here it's saying, right, um, I expected two and two, I'm gonna pass in four, but I've got four. So what I need to do in here is um, add some more functionality. Uh, so with, uh, when we pass in something that's a four. And I only want to add two so if I do number is mod 2 equals 0 that will let me handle the 4 and I do um, primes dot add it to and I want to add the second 2 so I've got here so I can do number divided by 2 run the tests I've got that to pass fantastic uh, but on passing that test I've actually failed another test uh, the one previously which is uh, two and the reason why it's doing that is because it's adding one and we don't want to note one to the list so we want to do uh, primes so not primes number is greater than one so it's only allowed to add it if it's greater than one Fantastic. Passing test. Right, so I can refactor. Um, some duplication here, but I had to put that line in. Um, let's just take this out for now and just put it here to kind of highlight that 
some reason I've got some dry ice in there but I need it because the tests are telling me I need it. Right, so there is some refraction I can do here because I don't need to be explicit because I put that already in. Uh, I can now write my five, which I don't need because it's a passing test. And let's prove it out quickly. Okay, six, same as, it should be two and three. Oh, so but it already passes, so I've already got a logic for six. That's interesting. Uh, it's not a passing, it's not a failing test, so I can delete it. I could keep, keep it if I thought there was additional complexity that has valid for that reason there, but there's extra maintain, maintain, maintenance that's needed uh, for that test, um, which is not required. So let's do eight is the next one, um, which is two, uh, two and two. Let's run the test. Now I need to look at the code and see, right, okay, how can I generalize this to make this pass? Is there anything I can do to generalize this? And this is because I want to do, basically repeat this. Uh, before, before it was just two uh, and two for four, but what I want to do is basically change this if, whoops, into a while. Fantastic, so I've got this passing test. So I've just literally changed an if to a while. So this is saying, right, we are now, you know, the tests are getting more specific, the code is getting more generalized. Right, let's write the next test. So nine is three and three. Failing test, great. So as soon as before, I want to kind of generalize it. And I've got this two, but now I want to be able to deal with it when it's got three. So when nine comes in, I have two, two, go straight over there and goes into nine. So I need to generalize this. So I'm gonna literally take this out and put it into a variable first. So let's do that. Uh, replace and I'm called divisor. Great, I'm going to put it out of the section. And that's because of the changes, I'm running. Okay, in the same state as before. With that, I can probably change this now if statement to be more generalized to a while loop. And what I want to do is I want to test two and then I want to go around and try three. So if I do divisor plus plus, that should be good. Yes, it is. So it's all green. And I can now refactor. So I can see that this condition now is never met because if it comes out of this, then that's always going to be true. So I can delete that. And the beauty about my test is now I can just verify that quite quickly. Great, I can remove that. Don't need that. Uh, that's it. Oh, and I can move this dead code as well. All right, I think we're probably there, but let's go on to the next test. Uh, two, 10 is two and five. Great, it looks like we've probably got the formula, but let's try one more then, just to verify that. So if we did 30 in, a, in the actual example, it was given it was two, three, and five. Great. So can we um, refactor this even further so it's even less code? Um, yes, we can. So if we look at the for uh, sorry, while, we can change this into a for loop. Um, and we do that by doing this. Great, and same for this one, we can change this one into a four. Uh, we can take this into here, and we can take this into here. Right. On the test, great, so we're sending a four, and we can remove the embraces because we don't need them as they're all one line. So, so as you can see, we have basically five lines of code for this kind of kata. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and thank you.